the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew your people. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires now, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we praise you through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from Prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me the word of the Lord. of splendor, a 
ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, to the Lord glory and strength. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. Give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of Christ. When you read those how-to preaching books, some of them tell you to start off with a joke. Okay, I'm sometimes, not often, but sometimes I'm willing to listen to advice. So here's the joke. Who is the only Irish person in either the Old or the New Testament? Nick Odemus. Yeah, that deserved the groan that I just heard. Now, aren't you very glad that that is out of the way? But today's scripture, today's scripture is no joke. It is the story of somebody named Nicodemus whose brain is stuffed with all sorts of important things to know and to remember. He is a Pharisee, after all, a member of the Jewish ruling council. This means that he knows all sorts of religious things and all sorts of political things as well. He is high up there. He is high up on the leadership totem pole. He's really rather covered the Hebrew power bases. And yet, here is this man, this power player, sneaking around at night, trying to get an interview with the itinerant preacher, Jesus. This is role reversal, here we come. Let's take a good look 
at Nicodemus and consider our options. The first thing Nicodemus must decide, considering that he has a certain understanding of how the world works, he understands it really well, he's a power player, and therefore he knows how power speaks to power. Considering all of that, he would probably begin with a little flattery. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. When meeting somebody special, don't you know, greasing the wheels is not a bad idea. I'm thinking he would naturally accept, expect some sort of a aw shucks response from Jesus. Nicodemus is a big cheese in Hebrew life. Surely he does not expect the response that he gets. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. What must Nicodemus think? What, pray tell, does being born again have to do with belonging to the kingdom of God? And somebody born Jewish, I, Nicodemus, am naturally a part of the kingdom of God. It is a slam dunk. And what is this born again business anyway? Can't Jesus see that Nicodemus is an older gentleman? He's long in the tooth, actually. How can Nicodemus possibly be born again? It isn't humanly possible. Nicodemus probably thinks he's hearing things. He's been buttering Jesus up big time, and Jesus has not returned the compliment. Instead, he's turned the conversation to something totally unexpected. What constitutes a right relationship with God. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Jesus says, you should not be surprised, but that doesn't mean that Nicodemus isn't totally out of his comfort zone. He's probably still too hung up on what he thought that he heard. Born again? Not possible. But then Jesus kindly throws the man and throws us a lifeline. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. To make a long story short, you can't control the wind, and you certainly can't control the Holy Spirit. Rebirth, spiritual birth, is a gift from God, not something you work for on your own. So the logical question now to ask is this, where do disciples come from? Or, for you English teachers out there, from where do disciples come? You could say that, like Nicodemus, there are seekers, self-selected seekers, people who come to Jesus asking for salvation. But that's rather a nail-scratch kind of an answer it is hardly very deep. What Jesus says is much more profound. Disciples come from water and from the Spirit. God makes the choice, and we simply follow. Not very self-actualizing, is it? But nonetheless, it is true. Disciples are indeed born from above. They receive the rebirth that the Spirit gives. They receive it, and it is strengthened through holy baptism, through holy communion, and through interaction with fellow believers. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Dear people, it isn't about us. God is so fond of his world, the world he made tove that is good, that he gives us his son. God sends us his spirit. We receive and we believe, and we are assured that we will never, ever be erased. We will never be forgotten by God, perhaps forgotten by history, but never, ever forgotten by God. And that, that is real love, that is abiding love, that is the kind of love that you can bet your life on. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Our God isn't out there, you know, putting down marks against our names when we do something wrong. He's not, ch he is not chuckling and chortling when we sin. No, when we fall short of his glory, absolutely not. Our God is active in our world. He sends his son. He rescues and he redeems his people. So here is the good news. The people for whom he sent his son, the people that he rescues and redeems, that people, that's us. May we share that gift with all whom we meet. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the triune Lord, giving praise to God the Father in the name of Jesus and, the, and in the power of their spirit. At the end of each petition, I'll say, Lord, hear us, and I invite you to respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. For the church, that it would be renewed in its witness to the world. For our leaders, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, for Andrew and Kevin, our bishops, and for the churches of our diocese, their clergy, lay leaders, and wardens, that the life of God would be seen in our life together. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for the world, for its healing and renewal, and for a spirit of mutual respect and peace to prevail, for the victims of religious and political persecution, and especially for refugees and those fleeing unsafe conditions in their countries of origin, that they would be protected and sheltered and find a home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For students and those who learn that their minds would be directed to the love of truth and its enjoyment. For primary and secondary school students, that their learning would continue despite the difficulty of being away from schools. And for seminarians and those who study for ministry, that they would be blessed in their studies and deepened in their knowledge of you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, for those burdened in body and soul, remembering those from our own community, Sophie, Grace, Jennifer, Dolph, Herminia, Hans, Bob, Marshall, Catherine, Maria, Caitlin, Beth, Stella, Manley, Janice, Joe, and the Corbo family, that they would be relieved and restored and know the peace which is yours alone to give. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who mourn, that they would know your consolation. And for the faithful departed, remembering today, Julia, Philip, Ward, and for those in whose memory the altar flowers are dedicated, John Gildersleeve Kirkpatrick, Irina Groton Kirkpatrick, and Tish McSwain. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and may your light perpetual shine upon them. Finally, for the blessings of this life and for the many gifts given to us, we offer up our thanks. May we see in these gifts the light of your light, that with grateful hearts we may rejoice in you, the giver of all good gifts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord with all the people of God, wherever you may be, wherever you're watching from, welcome to our worship here, Grace Church, on this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope your Trinity Sunday is as beautiful as it is right here. Let me thank 
Pastor Susan for her words to us on this Trinity Sunday and for Dean Douglas for presiding for us today. Uh, it's wonderful to have such gifted clergy co colleagues in this parish. And speaking of that, young Micah ordained one month. Uh, congratulations to him. You may be interested, there is a interview that's just gone on our website of Micah and his wife, Claire, two newly ordained deacons talking about their journey to this point in their lives. Catch it on our website. Now, because we can't be together as a community, but we can remember one another as a community, today is a very special Trinity Sunday for it is Margaret Pereira's birthday. And from all of us, our love to you, Margaret, and congratulations. You're so much, you're a pillar of this place of grace, and we love you. All right. Um, now we have, I'm going to turn to our church warden, Aaron Isles, who has some very exciting news about what we're about to undertake here over this pandemic summer, so that when we get back together, this place will be refurbished and ready to go. Aaron Isles. Thank you, Peter. Good morning. I do have some exciting news to share with you today. The Narthex Courtyard Project, which we have been busy planning over the past several months, is beginning. With the goals of refreshing the spaces, making the Lonsdale and Thelma entrances to the church more attractive and inviting, increasing accessibility, and creating more usable space for worship and fellowship, we hope to substantially transform and very much improve our North Exon Courtyard. Specifically, regarding accessibility, after completion of this project, people with mobility issues could be dropped off at the Thelma entrance and proceed through the courtyard into the narthex. From there, by means of a small open elevator, they would have access to the church. To give you more details, here's a wonderful vi video which outlines the project. In essence, what we plan to do is open the space up and make it more spacious, bright, and welcoming for the parish and the surrounding community. The centerpiece will be the beautiful new Trinity skylight that will flood the entire narthex with light. There'll be a new information screen, a donor wall, and a welcome hub for greeting parishioners and visitors. And the decor, color schemes, flooring, and trim will all be replaced or refreshed. All with a mind to making our main entrance and greeting area more contemporary and inviting. And since we'll be spending more time outdoors in our post-pandemic future, our courtyard is going to be completely redesigned and landscaped. With it, we will be able to host everything from receptions, community events and study groups, to small weddings, baptisms, services, or quiet contemplation. Our new outdoor space will become an urban oasis and will feature a memorial lich gate to serve as an entrance to the new narthex. And one of the most important focuses of the new venue will be to provide wheelchair access from the courtyard to the sanctuary, plus the installation of new handrails. This initiative is so much more than a project. I like to think of it as an investment in the future of our church, a gift to our children and to the generations that will follow them. Over the last few years, our iconic church has undergone a remarkable spiritual awakening and has transformed itself into a dynamic and vital place of worship that strives to meet the needs of a diverse, culturally rich congregation. That's why we believe this project is not just important, it's essential in helping us sustain our excellence. Our new Narthex and Courtyard will not only expand our worship, music, and church life programs, but they also will enhance the childcare center and church school. 
as well as a beautiful new home for occasions like concerts, readings, and community events. We hope that with luck, our Narthex and Courtyard project will be completed by the fall of this year. But the simple truth is, we need you to make it happen. In the coming weeks, our team will be reaching out to every member of the parish to ask for a donation. Your generous support will help us create a new place of grace that will serve us for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Andy and Shelley, and everyone who contributed to that wonderful video. Construction of the courtyard portion, which will be new grading, new pavers, new planters, the wonderful trellis that you saw in the video, and the lich gate that will welcome people when they enter from the Thelma side, will actually begin on Monday, and with lots of luck, be completed by the end of September. Fingers crossed. <laughs> We are still working on some of the details for the North X portion and we'll keep you updated with the timelines. Updates will be posted on our website and social media. So now is a great time to follow Grace Church on Facebook and Instagram if you don't already. It has been many years since Grace Church has undergone a substantial transformation such as this. We welcome everyone to consider how they would like to support this venture and consider what your gift might be. Donations can be made on the website. This is a very exciting time and a new phase for Grace. Thank you very much. Indeed, it is an exciting time, and thank you for your leadership, Aaron Isles, and also Andy Duncanson, on our fundraising side particularly. Well, when the rest of the world seems to have stopped, we've decided to do something. So when it restarts and we're all fully vaccinated again, we can be together in a completely refreshed and renewed place of grace. On this Trinity Sunday, let us hear a hymn to the Trinity by the Russian composer Tchaikovsky.
Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the glory of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death 
we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice and, made a, and make us acceptable in him. May he be sanctified by the, may we be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, and you are the branches. This is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
God watch over you, the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints and martyrs pray for you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Al